Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Tasty Bros, and today we're going to be doing a $1,500 all AMD based gaming PC. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from one of our favorite sponsors. This video is brought to you by GBG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. So if you guys use our discount code with the link that is given down below, it's code TB20, that'll give you 20% off making your Windows 10 Pro key only $12 and some change. And then you can use it to activate something like this build here. Don't forget to use the links down below for this stuff as well. We use GBG Mall for builds like this and every single build that you may not see on camera. And they have been a go-to reliable source to get really genuine Windows 10 keys to activate your system. So if you're rocking that watermark still, buy a Windows 10 key, link in the description down below. Now, thanks again to GBG Mall and let's get into this PC build. So big thanks to AMD, Gigabyte and Biostar for helping us make this build possible. Now let's go ahead and talk about each part and exactly how it makes up this $1,500 build. So what we have here is the top of the line 3800X from AMD. This comes with AMD's Prism RGB cooler that actually looks really good and supposedly can actually keep up with this monster of a CPU. Now keep in mind, this is a lot like a 3700X except it can achieve higher overclocks and such. So if you wanna save a little mon bit of money, don't forget to go with the 3700X, but we're gonna be using this bad boy in this build. So like we said, big thanks to Biostar. This is the X570 GT Racing Edition because it's just lightning fast, but this is a micro ATX board that has some nice RGB on it and should be third gen. Actually, it says right there, it's actually third gen ready. It's the first time we've seen that in a while. So yeah, this board should just work out of the box. This does come with PCIe Gen 4 and all of the other new features that you could possibly need with Ryzen third gen. So this cooler that we have here, which now I'm starting to wonder if it's even gonna fit in this freaking case, is the Ninja 5 from Scythe. It is a giant, and I mean giant, cooler. Like, I mean, look at the size of the box. This isn't just extra boxing just for fun. This is the size of the cooler, and you will see that once we get it out onto this build. But luckily, AMD's nice enough to send a cooler with it, so if this does not fit, then um, it might not be in the video. Now, I do also want to give a big thanks to Crucial. They sent over this 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM. This is some really fast memory, and there are a lot of options you can go with the Ryzen 3rd gen, but Crucial was nice enough to hook us up with this kit because we wanted some of the best you can get, the lowest latency, the highest speed, the best performing RAM, because you know Ryzen loves fast RAM and low latency RAM, so we're going to put this system to the test using this RAM and see what kind of performance we get. All that RAMing. Now, Gigabyte was nice enough to send over one of their Radeon RX 5700 XTs. Yes, this is a custom edition of the 5700 XT, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. It's gonna be more than enough to cool this 5700 XT, which is a heat demanding monster sometimes because of all the VRMs and everything. But custom coolers are here. We're actually gonna get the full potential of this card and it won't be thermal throttled by the stock cooler. Now for storage, of course, we like to go with M.2 drives because it just saves a lot of space. And this is a crucial one terabyte M.2, their MX500. It's gonna be really fast. They actually didn't send this over, we bought it ourselves, so. Huh. But uh, this SSD is more than enough storage to get the system up and running. You can always add a hard drive or maybe more SSDs if you want extra storage. But uh, you know, one terabyte SSD, super fast. 2019, gotta go with an SSD. Now the power supply is actually quite interesting. We were browsing Amazon and we saw that Gigabyte makes power supplies. So we thought might as well do Gigabyte power supply and just see if it's any good. So this is their B700H semi-modular power supply, which is really good because we can do good cable management, but we're gonna add an extra flair to it by this custom sleeve kit, which the name of the company is kind of not in my head right now. If you wanna know the actual person who makes this, link in the description down below. But these are some white silver-ish sleeve cables. They're supposed to be white, but we'll see how they look in this build when it's done. And that white cabling is meant to match this right here. This is the H510i from NZXT. Big thanks again to NZXT for sending this over. This is basically the newer version of the H500, which you know is literally my favorite case. It's my personal rigs case. Um, it has some updated IO like USB Type-C, USB 3, and all that sort of fun stuff. But basically it is the much loved H500 and it's just, you know, here and looking nice with built-in RGB functionality. So how about we go ahead and put together probably one of the most expensive PC builds you'll see us make.
Alright guys, so the first game we're going to be testing on this PC is Fortnite. Whoa. Now, we are currently running at Pro Settings, which is what more normal people run this game at. But, you know, if you want to get even better visual fidelity, you could definitely crank it with this system up to Epic Settings. But, to see the best case scenario for somebody who wants to play Fortnite at the best possible frame rates on like a high refresh rate display, we're going to run it at Pro Settings. So, let's go ahead and load into a match real quick and uh, see what kind of performance we get. This is Fortnite. This is Fortnite. So, we're going to drop in real quick and see what kind of performance zones we can get. Right now, from the dropship, we're at around 300 plus FPS. <laughs> Honestly, this is not a surprise. This is not a super hard game to run. Uh, well, especially nowadays. But uh, uh, getting higher above... Getting above like 144 FPS would be ideal with this setup because you could run high refresh rate at 1080p, but the system is definitely not a slouch when it comes to 1440p either. So if you have like a really nice 1440p monitor, you can always crank down the settings a little bit or crank up the settings to play at 1440p. Now we're in like the middle of nowhere and we're like hitting like over 400 FPS, which is honestly just kind of insane right now um, and just bounced into the roof. Uh, but this game, again, is pretty simple to run. And this system with the Ryzen Virgin processor is definitely going to get higher FPS because of that IPC on the new Ryzen processors. So if you're a Fortnite pro considering getting a new system, you know, maybe consider Ryzen. It could be a good option for you. And it's pretty cost effective. What's this bush doing over here? <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay guys, the next game we are testing out is Player Unknown Battlegrounds. We're at 1920 by 1080 with unlimited everything on ultra settings. Let's launch in this really loud game. Alright, one thing to note while we're waiting for the game to uh, launch, right now on auto settings where the processor is boosting on its own, it's getting up to 4.3-ish gigahertz, 4.4, which is actually relatively high for third gen Ryzen. That Ninja 5 is doing a really good job at keeping that thing under wraps, and the RAM is running at 3600 megahertz using an XMP profile. So, this system is really running at its ideal settings right now, and we're getting really good results. All right, now that he landed, he's getting around well over 100 FPS. This is on all ultra settings, so again, with a first-person shooter, especially a battle royale, you can always lower the settings if you want to hit a high refresh rate target at 1080p. Um, but we'll see. Oh, again. His teammates are already dead. Are they really? Well, it's just you and uh, Hannah, the oh. gamer girl. Oh, thank goodness. Get your backpack, dude. No. Oh. I forgot you needed that in this game. <laughs> Let's see that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Love PUBG. What do you think? We run across here. Do it. I know there was a guy in that building right in front of you. The one that I just shot at? No, the one on your right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, there he is. <laughs> oh, you've been knocked down. No, he can't hit me. He can't hit me. He can't hit me. Oh. Okay, the next game we are testing that is also very loud is CSGO. We are at 1920 by 1080, all high settings because, well, it's CSGO and it's old. But let's see if we can get those competitive frame rates. Competitively good frame rates. All right, guys, so as you can tell, CSGO running a gun game, arms race, uh, well over 200 FPS, if you can even hear us speaking currently. Uh, but we're going to dive into it and see what kind of kills Jackson can get. But CSGO is a no-brainer. It's going to run perfectly fine on this setup. And it does show that Ryzen processor actually boosted all the way up to 4.4 gigahertz, close to 4.5, which shows the power of the 3800X compared to something like the 3700X. It's more likely to boost higher on its own because it's actually bin. It's a bin CPU, so... Oh. Ooh, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Ooh. The kick of the butt. Ooh. Oh god, yeah, I'm just so dead. <laughs> the ball. Where's the bot aiming that direction? Oh my god. Ah, pro gamer. Where's he at? <laughs> Seventy HP in a dream.
Okay guys, so we got the benchmarks done. You guys just now saw them and we really have no major complaints about this except for the scythe cooler because it's like this big decided to make us have to remove the 120 millimeter NZXT fan out of the back and we just basically don't really need it anyways because this fan is like within a couple of inches of blowing out the back anyways. And if you just got and <laughs> <laughs> we also went ahead and just moved that one fan to the front, which in turn made it to where we actually had every single fan covered up and ready to go. So overall with the NZXT case, the H510i, we are very impressed. It is a super sleek looking case. I personally love this case. It's literally the same case shill. I use. I'm a shill, I love it. Uh, but this case right here is a great option for those who are looking to build this system. And overall in terms of temperatures, uh, operation under load, in terms of exactly noise and stuff like that, it, uh, uh, performs very well and the uh, benchmark show exactly what kind of performance that 5700 XT has to offer. Those aftermarket coolers are really awesome because this thing kept at right around 60 degrees Celsius under load compared to those uh, reference cards which tend to get like up to 80 or 90 degrees. That is a night and day difference and there's definitely a lot of room to do some overclocking if that's something you're interested in. And of course this build was all like brand new parts that have just came out so it's really expensive. I mean $1,500 is a decent amount for a build. Now this does get great performance performance, but if you would like to save like a few hundred dollars, you can always go with something more like a 3700 or even a 2700 and save quite a bit of money and you could still get something like a 5700 or 5700 XT or if you really wanted to, you could go something like a used 1080 to kind of change the tables up a little bit and save a lot of money, but we got all brand new parts for this and it looks amazing and performs amazing. And to continue on that point, the 3800X is more than just a gaming CPU. So if you're just gaming, you could save a lot of money by going with like the 3600. Uh, but the 3800X can definitely do live streaming, video editing, and pretty much anything you could want from a modern processor. And it's honestly a great option if you're looking to get the best of the best in eight cores and 16 threads. So now let's wrap this video up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one. One. Goodbye. But first, a word from the outro sponsor. Just kidding. No, there's none. We don't do yeah, that. Peace out. We may do that in the future, but not. Yeah. Now. I don't know.